You know what Jesus said early on when, when he had all these crowds following him? He said, you don't come and follow me because of the miracles. You come because I gave you bread and fish to eat. That's why you want some more bread and fish. That's what he said early on in one of these chapters. The eating of his body and drinking of his blood is a symbolic statement of his death and resurrection. His shed blood for the forgiveness of sins and his broken body for the curse. When we celebrate communion, we celebrate communion in remembrance of what Jesus did for us. There are churches that do not believe in healing today. They teach that healing passed away with the apostles 2,000 years ago. And there's not just a few of them. There are thousands of them in the world and even in America. I tell those churches, but they all take communion. Sometimes every week they take communion. They take the wafer. They take the cup. And in taking, in taking the cup, it's symbolizing that Jesus' shed blood was for forgiveness of sin. The, the wafer or the bread was that his broken body was for the curse, which is all disease. In the day that these churches that deny that healing is for today, take the wafer or take the cracker but deny that it works for today, but celebrate it. They are cursed with a curse. And the Bible says, and Paul taught it this way, because they don't rightly divine, the, they don't rightly understand or divide or understand the body of Christ. For this reason, many of them in these churches are sick, they're weak, and they die premature deaths because they don't, Discern and practice what it represents. When you take communion, you're celebrating that you're in fellowship with the Lord and the Father. You are saying that you're dealing with your stuff. You also are, are saying that as you are dealing with your stuff and repenting and applying what is available to you from the cross, that the curse is broken and now healing and is possible for your life of disease and healing and diseases that were headed your way may never come because of your obedience. So Jesus is speaking ahead about his death and resurrection, not literally eating his body or his blood. But in the communion, his his shed blood, without the shedding of blood, according to Scripture, there is no forgiveness of sin. No greater love is there, according to Scripture, than a man who would lay his life down for another. Jesus the man. God did not die for your sins. Jesus the man did. Jesus divested himself of the glory that he had with the Father, according to Scripture, he lowered himself beneath the angels, and he came in by the Holy Ghost of the womb of Mary, and he was born a human being, son of God and son of David. But he was human. He had to have his diapers changed. He was, he was a little baby. He had to grow up. He had to begin to learn. He had, had and, in, and by 12, he'd learned a lot because he was debating with religious leaders. At age 12, he, he learned fast, didn't he? Because there was nothing within him to hinder his pattern of understanding. It's a tremendous understanding of how, how, how this happened. But we accept it. And because we accept it, we can partake of it. The Bible talks about partaking of communion unworthily. What's the unworthy mean? You take the cup, but you don't repent for your sins. That's fraud, isn't it? You celebrate, but you just won't, you won't bow your knee. You take the wafer or the cracker, but you deny healing is for today. 
deliverances for today.